Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. I'm excited to show you my new find from Staples. It's a package of plastic dividers, which I got for the grand sum of $3.88. And I've already opened one package here. Uh, it comes, let's see, it says eight big tab, write and erase plastic dividers. So they come in this cool pastel colors and they're very sturdy, kind of frosted plastic. And uh, these are actually nicer than the last ones I had. Um, so I think these will make great reusable stencils. And the price is right. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start making shapes. Now, uh, I've been using my old reusable stencils for a while, so the shapes are kind of repetitious. So I'm going to do something else. They're still very organic. And I think it's more fun if you make your own stencils. It uh, hands down beats a store-bought one. Okay, I'm not going to use all of them. I will just start with these. And I think it, since these are heavier, it's safer to use a pair of scissors than a razor blade. So.
Okay, now that I have my new reusable stencils ready, I am going to take inspiration from a piece by Carlos Merida. He's a Guatemalan uh, mural painter. And what you see on your screen is called Dialogo Silente, which means a silent dialogue. This is a work on paper done in 1966. And what attracted me was the background, which is uh, a, a beautiful burnt sienna. And I thought I could use that as a starting point. So before doing anything, I will create some textures, some shapes here with my Sharpie like I usually do. Now these may or may not show up, but I'm going to put them down anyway. Now because I'm writing on a jelly plate, the uh, ink is not as intense as uh, I would have if it was a Posca marker, but that's okay. This is just like a background texture. And then I will apply the underlying background, which is this beautiful burnt sienna. Now I tried my best to clean these. This is the best I can do. I really like to leave this texture on because it makes a very beautiful effects. So I'm just going to lay down a uniform layer of burnt sienna. Okay. Then, as usual, I will do my scribble marks. So the inspiration really is more on the color combination, not so much the image. But when you see the final result, you'll see a relationship somewhat. Again, I'm using my favorite Somerset texture, 22 by 30. I know the most frequently asked question is what kind of paper I use. Um, I change from time to time because I like to have a variation.
Okay, so I'm going to leave this for five minutes and hopefully it will pick up the Sharpie markings. Okay, it's been about, oh, maybe six, seven minutes. Let's see what we have here. I think it picked up the uh, brown color very well. And this is a little more textured than the original inspiration piece, which is fairly flat. This shows a lot of brushwork and textures. And I'm glad that it's not tearing because I have been very uh, diligent in oiling the plate. Okay, pretty cool. It's working as it should. It picked up every tiny bit of the brown color. So I will air dry this and proceed to layer number two. So I'll do the unbleached titanium in the middle and then I will do some yellow on the outer edges. It's a raw sienna. Now I'm trying my best to work fairly quickly because I know that the titanium dries fast.
this is my fault I should I should have cleared my table first but I got carried away I got so excited by uh, getting new stencil material so I couldn't wait to cut it Okay. And here is the first layer. I think I did a slight mis misregistration. I put the paper on crooked. I hope it's not too obvious. Could be worse. Here is layer number two. Pretty cool. Now I will see if I can capture this now this black acrylic requires that you shake it because the uh, the extender tends to separate
Okay, let's see what we have here. Very soft colors. Kind of like an aquatic effect. Impressionist painting. So I will air dry this again and maybe I can pick up this other ghost print. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Let's see what we have here. Pretty wild.
this is the most painterly one so far. I like the uh, color combinations. Very cool. Now this part dried up a bit. I can fix that. I love it. So I'm going to set this aside to air dry and then recap. Okay, everyone, here is my favorite part of this video where I get to recap and show you the final product. And this is the first print. And this is the closest to the inspiration piece by Carlos Merida. And here is a close up. As you can see, the black creates a very nice texture, almost like the grain of wood. And uh, I like that a lot. So here is, you can see the scribbles of the Sharpie pen. And the textures created by the combination of titanium white and the raw sienna. So it's a very limited color palette, but I think it's very effective. Okay, so that is the first print inspired by the work of Carlos Merida. Now here is the ghost print. It's a totally different look. Well, this looks more like an impressionist landscape because of the blues and the greens and it's very evocative of water. And you see the textures here are very similar to the reflections on the water. Here is a close-up. And the overlay of black, fortunately, is very soft. It's not a harsh black but a very powdery, soft black, which I think complements the background. So that is the second ghost print in blue and green. And here is my favorite. It is the most painterly of all. It's a close. There's a very dynamic interplay of texture and color. So that is the third print, which is a ghost print. I hope you like this video, and thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Please check out my new website, 
artwhisperer88.com and tell me what you think. I hope to see you next time.